so I try and clean them up a bit in that way. Right now I'm inking, just inking over where I've already penciled. Um, and that's pretty safe. I, I know where these things are going to go. Let's see, I know that this is going to be black. Nice solid shadow. Part of the difficulty in, in inking is to keep into consideration the, the color that's eventually going to be part of the image. When, as you get better, I don't know, even as, as you're beginning, you want to do everything with the ink. You want to do all of the shading. You want to really do a painting in ink. That's the impulse. Notice I'm turning my, my page here. That's You have to be able to do that. I've got a bunch of stuff here that's stopping me. But uh, So anyway, you have to be ready to leave white space for the color. And it doesn't make for the best black and white drawing. So if you're going to if what you're doing is going to strictly be done in black and white, then, then great. Don't think about color. Do tons and tons of shading, hatching. Go nuts. But if it's destined for color, you need to leave uh, more white on the board for the color. My heroes include Bernie Wrightson and Barry Windsor Smith. But really my number one is Bernie Wrightson. His blacks are just so livid. He really knew where to black things out to make a really strong silhouette. There's so much shape and form that's implied in the areas where he has flat, flat black. And he was just such an, an awesome, awesome draftsman that he could pull that off. And that's because I sincerely believe he, he drew lots of detail into his shadow areas and then he just blacked it out. But it takes a very keen eye to know when and where to uh, to destroy <laughs> your artwork. Okay, I have to seriously rotate this upside down. The reason I have to rotate this page upside down is because my hand creates a, a natural movement, left to right, in a curve, in an arc, based on where my wrist is uh, is resting. I need this. This I need to rest my arm so that I have control when I pull a line. So I pull from left to right in that kind of an arc. Right here. I need to pull in the opposite direction, so I have to rotate in order to get a nice clean line of the kind that I have in my mind to do it just the way I want to do it. I have to rotate my page um, upside down. Also, I'm rotating my pen to find the, the point, or my, my brush rather. The brush isn't going to stay at a perfect point at all times. Especially when it's heavily loaded down with ink. There. I'm going to take back. Well, not yet. I want that solid black to go right up to his boot. Someday when I get enough money, I'm going to get some specialized glasses, because I do wear glasses, because I am short-sighted, or near-sighted, <laughs> maybe both, um, so that my 
so that my focal distance to my artwork is something like six inches away because I think that would be ideal for getting the level of detail that I'm looking for. There. Oh, I think maybe that wasn't in frame when I was doing that. Let's see if I can zoom in a little more. There we go. For my technique, one of the things I really love to do is to pull a very long, gradual line. And uh, that's what I'm going to try and do right here. Pull a very gradual line here. And to do that, I've got these pencil lines already made. So that I can just follow those. A huge help. These are hard to do and hard to judge the thickness of over a, a long area, a long space. And you really have to have a very fine point to start them off. thing I don't worry about too much is the cleanliness of the thickness of my lines as I pull them. I have other concerns. There we go. So it goes around the boot. I'll have it go right up into there and disappear. I see these kinds of lines and most of my lines as a graphic element and again that's part of the reason that I don't cross hatch. I need my hatch lines to to work with the blacks to make shapes. I, they're not just for shading they're graphic elements and a lot of I think that a lot of fine artists um, treat them as just shading and a lot of comic book artists treat them just as graphic elements and ignore lighting for example um, I think that mine have to do both they have to merge and work with the the shapes the black shapes and basically what I, I've drawn and they also have to define lighting that's if I have one gripe with most comic book art is that it doesn't seem to notice that there are specific light sources much of the time. Occasionally, I mean, you'll see a face, for example, lit properly, uh, inked properly, shaded properly as if there's a light source, and then everything else will, will not seem to have that, have, have obeyed the physical lighting that exists only for the face where there's just not much attention paid to creating shapes to define shading based on the lighting so again I need both I need my the shapes that I make with my with my brush to be graphic elements, to be interesting, to have style, to have a visual reason for being there, but also to obey my uh, as strict an interpretation I can come up with of physical lighting, of actual lighting. I'm also a 3D artist. That's how I make my my nut, my bread and my butter. Mm, better. And it isn't a cart before the horse, horse thing. I've always been a real stickler for lighting. Always, always. Well before I started doing 3D. 
but I went into 3D because it was a way for me to more accurately interpret light. So first came the desire to interpret lighting correctly, and then came the 3D because it did what I wanted. Ah, I'm way zoomed in here. I'm moving the page around. I don't think you can see it. Let's see, right there, okay. And I'll just put a lot of black in there, fill that in, worry about the rest of the shading later.